grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. God in Christ has revealed his glory. Come, let us worship. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the Lord's name is greatly to be praised. Give him praise, you servants of the Lord. O oh, praise the name of the Lord. Do you please sit down. It really is a joy to be here today uh, for this service. Um, I love these services and looking out at you all, not least because it makes me feel a little bit younger. But in all seriousness, the reason is because I look at all the years of service and the wisdom, all that following faithfully, um, and that just here in this place together is so delightful. So it is a joy to be here today, and it is a joy to see you all. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and sacrament, let us call to mind and confess our sins. We have not always worshipped God, our Creator. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have not always followed Christ, our Saviour. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We have not always trusted in the Spirit, our guide. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand if you're able, we're going to sing the Gloria. <laughs> was going on. But it was joyful and giving God glory in many different words, but not all the right ones at the right time. So thank you for keeping up with whatever it was you were singing. <laughs> Let us pray. O oh God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers 
And because through the weakness of our mortal nature, we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in the keeping of your commandments, we may please you both in will and deed, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Do you please sit. The first reading is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning at the first verse. Paul called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. His holy gospel. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. So may I speak by invitation of the one true and living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please do be seated. And can I add my welcome to that of Bishop Julie? Uh, this is now the third Eucharist we have done, which in the diary is known as the Retired Clergy Eucharist, which always seems like a slightly odd title to me. But this is the largest because, of course, I arrived in COVID. So it's very good to see you. If you've got no idea who I am, uh, my name is Mark and I'm the Bishop of Chester. And uh, Julie, Bishop Julie, who's the Bishop of Birkenhead, is presiding. What a weird life I lead that this is informal dress. 
But there you go. It's good to be with you, and it will be good to be with those who have accepted the invitation to my garden party to come to the garden afterwards. Last year, I said, you're all welcome. And there were some tourists in the cathedral who thought that applied to them too. <laughs> and I had a range of people gate crashing. So if you haven't accepted the invitation, then please do so next year, and it will be very good to welcome you in 12 months' time. And those whom I have, it will be delightful uh, to share. We will be in the garden uh, because the weather looks like it will be clement. I want to ask you what might sound like a very cheeky question and then share my heart with you. My question is, do you believe this? Not the electronic device that I'm waving around, but the passage which you have just heard read to you. Do you believe that when Jesus offered the Beatitudes, he actually meant them? If you've heard me preaching elsewhere, you will know that one of the questions I often ask myself is, do I really believe the good news of Jesus? Because the pressure in the modern church is to do more, to act faster, to get emails and texts and WhatsApp messages and the whole lot replied to almost before they are sent, to be everywhere for everyone in every way. And I know that the pressure has always been on in some ways to do that. But as this world gets closer and closer with the pressure of technology, it seems as if it only ramps up. And I have to say, it seems to me the disease of the 21st century Christian is what one might call functional atheism. In other words, you believe and assent in your mind and your heart that God is real and His Word is true, but the pressure is to live as if you have to do it all. And that is a very fine distinction from the challenge that was offered to you, not when you were ordained, but rather when you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, which was to take up your cross and give your very last breath in service of the kingdom. And I don't diminish that at all in what I'm saying. But when that flips over into the, I had better do it, otherwise it will not get done, the church is sailing in very perilous waters indeed. One of the many, many things for which I want to thank you from the very bottom of my heart is for the way that you pray for us and, I have to say, for me personally. I am more grateful than I know how to express. It is an almost physical experience as I kneel in my chapel day by day to know myself in my weakness and folly to be upheld by your prayers and by the prayers of many others. But the pressure to make it seem as if safeguarding must be sorted by me, because I'm the bishop, and LLF, if I don't sort it, if I don't offer leadership, then the whole church will explode. And so I'm not simply saying the pressure will be on you to act as if atheism were our way of life. It is a daily pressure that I feel and I freely confess to you. And so I come back to my simple question. Do I believe this? For if I do, in these words I will find the truth that ministry is far more about character than it is about competence, that it is far more about who we are than about what we do. I have one or two years before I'm allowed to retire, well, 20, unless I manage to be extraordinarily naughty and get kicked out, which may be one of my ambitions, but we shall see. <laughs> but one of my ambitions for my own retirement is that I might be able to correct 
what I think I will put down as the biggest mistake of my licensed ministry, and that is an addiction to activism. And friends, if I can recruit you to anything in this season, it would be this, and I offer you this as a cry from my heart, I hope, to yours. I want you to stand with me, not just as those who cover services, as those who offer pastoral ministry, as those who do all those things, although I am deeply grateful for all the active ministry that you offer, but primarily, I want you to stand with me as culture formers in this great diocese of Chester as those who will be the points of sanity and stillness and calm, and remind people that Jesus is not only real, He is powerful, and He has not finished with us yet. I want you to be those who walk into the madness and bring meekness, who walk into the activism and draw people into a place of prayerfulness, who walk into the panic and speak peace, because you have seen much of this before, and you know that the world did not end, because you have faced these challenges, and Jesus is still on the throne. The Beatitudes are first and foremost about character, about identity. Be Beatitude priests, Beatitude deacons, Beatitude bishops in your retirement. Secondly, notice that the Beatitudes are all corporate before they are individual. And whilst I am analyzing some of the worst brokenness that I see in myself and the church around me, let me notice that a close second to my addiction to activism comes my addiction to individualism, comes my imbibing of the culture of the modern world that says, me, 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 before it says, even us, 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 let alone you, you, you. The New Testament is written in the plural. You know this. You will have preached on it yourself. But most languages, apart from English, have a different word meaning you, whether you are talking to an individual or whether you're talking to a group of people. It's what those who live in the south of the United States of America would call y'all. So it's quite different to say, would you go and get me a cup of tea? I don't want you to. I'm just using you as an example. But would you singular go and get me a cup of tea to saying, would y'all like a cup of tea? They're different words. And the New Testament is y'all, not you. It's in the plural because discipleship was never meant to be done alone. The poor in spirit It's easy to be poor in spirit by yourself. When it comes hard is when you have to do it with others. Or being meek. I'm great at being meek by myself, but tell me I'm wrong and meekness becomes much greater challenge. Or mourning. When I mourn over myself, I am only self-obsessed and useless. But this morning is over the brokenness that we face as we minister in Christ's name. Or mercifulness. Hey, I'll be merciful to myself all day long. Well, actually, that's not quite true because I quite like beating myself up. But when I have to be merciful to you, particularly if I think in the privacy of my own head that you've been a bit of a banana, that's when mercifulness becomes hard. It's true of all of the Beatitudes. They were designed to be held together. So be culture formers, both in that sense of trusting that God's Word is true and He will turn up, and secondly, teaching 
your brothers and sisters, as you learn yourself, that we stand together in this, or we do not stand at all. And thirdly, please notice that the Beatitudes are not by accident. Honestly, I think I've only seen this in recent times as I have read this. I think for most of my life, I've read the attitudes, sorry, the Beatitudes, although maybe that's a good slip. I've read the Beatitudes as, look, if you find yourself a bit poor in spirit, please don't worry because you're going to be blessed. They're there. If you find yourself mourning, please don't worry because you're going to find yourself blessed. They're there. As if Jesus is speaking a pastoral word of kindness to those who find themselves in difficult circumstances. The more I read them, the more I think that's a load of bunkum. I mean, it's not that it's not true, it's just that it's not the primary meaning of this passage. Rather, Jesus says, you are to spend yourself to the very last breath on the carrying of your cross and the going to the least, the lowest, and the lost. And in that, you will find yourself driven to utter poverty because you will give everything in the service of my kingdom. You will find yourself led into mourning because this world is more broken than you have yet begun to imagine. You will find yourself humbled because you, even if you think you're a banana now, you'll realize what a banana you are as you try to address the world's problems, or at least that's my testimony. If you think you hunger for thirst and thirst for righteousness now, come with me to the streets of Doncaster where I was firstly vicar and meet some of the girls who work those streets because they are trapped in a cycle of heroin addiction and then you will hunger and thirst for righteousness like you have never begun to do so now. This is not sympathy. This is the cost of following Jesus and that's where blessing lies. And it doesn't stop when the church calls you retired. In fact, my ambition is that for me, it will just begin to start because the stuff of my working life will be out the way and perhaps I will have learned enough wisdom to begin to try to do some of this. And so please, Know my gratitude for all that you do, but my request to you, and if I may speak just for a moment as your bishop, my commission to you is please be culture formers. I hope with me in this diocese, non-anxious, peaceful presence of Christ, Assuring people that God is good and that God has not given up. Drawing us together in fellowship, even when, perhaps especially when, we disagree most. And reminding people that yes, it hurts, but that's because it's worth it. And so let me offer you in conclusion, Eugene Peterson's take on the Beatitudes I guess many of you will know these, but Eugene Peterson, who's a great Canadian biblical scholar, has written a, it's not quite a translation, it's more of a transliteration of the whole of the Bible, so it sort of interprets in the way that he interprets, but he writes in a way which speaks to Western culture. It's called The Message, and this is how he retells the Beatitudes. You are blessed when you are at the end of your rope. With less of you, there is more of God and His rule. You're blessed when you've lost what's most dear to you. Only then can you be embraced by the one most dear to you. You're blessed when you, content, when you are content with just who you are, no more, no less. That's the moment you find yourself proud owners of everything that can't be bought. You're blessed when you've worked up a good appetite for God, he's food and drink in the best meal you'll ever eat. You're blessed when you care. At the moment of being careful, you'll find yourself cared for. You're blessed when you get your inside world, your mind and heart put right. Then you can see God in the outside world. You're blessed 
when you can show people how to cooperate instead of compete or fight. That's when you discover who you really are and your place in God's family. You're blessed in your commitment to God. And when that commitment provokes persecution, the persecution drives you even deeper into God's kingdom. Not only that, Count yourselves blessed every time people put you down or throw you out or speak lies about you to discredit me. What it means is that the truth is too close for comfort and they are uncomfortable. You can be glad when that happens. Give a cheer even, for though they don't like it, I do. And all of heaven applauds. And know that you are in good company. My prophets and my witnesses have always gotten into this kind of trouble. Friends, thank you. And be blessed in Christ's name. Amen. Please stand, if you're able, as we affirm together the faith of the Church in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please sit for our prayers. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Loving God, we pray that our hearts may always be alert to your presence, our eyes may always be open, and our ears ready to listen. We pray for the Church, the community of witness, through which you nourish and sustain the world. And today, in Chester Diocese, we pray for the church in Oldford, for Julian Beecham and Carl Jones, and Kath Wentel. May they live out the meaning of your word, and may their lives be practical examples of your self-giving love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world, a world which is hungry for your love. We pray for nations and governments engaged in conflict, thinking particularly of those in Ukraine and Afghanistan. We pray for political leaders, that they may have integrity, live with their eyes open to your love, and always serve the needs of others before themselves. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the life of all retired clergy, for the continuing renewal of the response to your love, for good relationships between people and the churches in which they worship. May we remember that your presence amongst us is perceived by others in terms of our commitment to your love, compassion, and generosity. Lord, in your mercy, our prayer. We offer to you the suffering world of your creation, those who are in pain or in isolation, those who have been in accidents or have a terminal illness. We pray that you visit them in the darkness of their fears and anxieties, reassuring them with the hope of inner nourishment and everlasting love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We celebrate the memory of those who have died and now live in the freedom of your perfect love. Praying for Brother Leo and Brother Spencer from the Solomon Islands and the Melanesian brothers who mourn their loss, and for Nora Skur and for Richard Sugg. And in the silence, we name those whom we have known and loved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We stand for the peace. We are all one in Christ Jesus. We belong to him through faith, heirs of the promise of the spirit of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Do greet one another safely.
Blessed be God, by whose grace creation is renewed, by whose love heaven is opened, by whose mercy we offer our sacrifice of praise. Blessed be God forever. If you need to sit at any stage, just do. That's absolutely fine by me. Um, just to say that communion will be intincted. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. You are worthy of all our thanks and praise, Lord God of truth. For by the breath of your mouth you have spoken your word, and all things have come into being. You fashioned us in your image and placed us in the garden of your delight. Though we chose the path of rebellion, you would not abandon your own. Again and again you drew us into your covenant of grace. You gave your people the law and taught us by your prophets to look for your reign of justice, mercy, and peace. As we watch for the signs of your kingdom on earth, we echo the song of the angels in heaven, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord God, you are the most holy one, enthroned in splendor and light. Yet in the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, you reveal the power of your love made perfect in our human weakness. Embracing our humanity, Jesus showed us the way of salvation. Loving us to the end, he gave himself to death for us. Dying for his own, he set us free from the bonds of sin, that we might rise and reign with him in glory. On the night he gave up himself for us all, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the death that he suffered on the cross. We celebrate his re resurrection, his bursting from the tomb. We rejoice that he reigns at your right hand on high, and we long for his coming in glory. As we recall the one perfect sacrifice of our redemption, Father, by your Holy Spirit, let these gifts of your creation be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Form us into the likeness of Christ and make us a perfect offering in your sight. Look with favor on your people and in your mercy hear the cry of our hearts. Bless the earth, heal the sick, let the oppressed go free and fill your church with power from on high. Gather your people from the ends of the earth to feast with all your saints 
at the table in your kingdom where the new creation is brought to perfection in Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Savior taught us, So we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in God. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, Grant us peace.
And so we pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Please bow your heads as we pray for God's blessing. God, who from the death of sin raised you to new life in Christ, keep you from falling and set you in the presence of his glory and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.